In this video, I'll demonstrate how to securely stake your dots using Polkadot.js apps. Before doing that, let's get few obvious things out of our way. If you have your dots elsewhere on non-custodial wallets, you'll be presented with a different user interface, but the underlying staking mechanism is the same, which is bonding the tokens, selecting the validators nominate, and earning your staking rewards. If you have your dots on custodial wallets like central exchanges, then you'll have to check with them regarding staking procedures, terms, and conditions. All right, now let's get back to Polkadot.js apps. If you are a beginner and you have not created an account on Polkadot yet, we recommend that you do it on Polkadot.js browser extension. The best thing about this extension is that it functions as a virtual vault to your account keys giving you full control on which websites can access your account. If you have multiple accounts on the extension, it lets you restrict the visibility of individual accounts as you specify. Here, I've changed the visibility settings of my account and this account cannot be accessed by any website now. A detailed video tutorial on how to create a new account on Polkadot.js is available in the video description. All right, now assuming that you have an account, uh, you just need to ensure your account has sufficient balance to stake. Currently, the minimum number of dots to nominate has changed to 120 from 80 through the motion 108. If you are affected by this change, please understand that this restriction is a temporary measure and efforts are being made to reduce the minimum bonding requirement significantly and increase the total number of nominators on the network. Um, the community will be notified once the fix is deployed on Polkadot. All right, now let's get back to some staking. I'll demonstrate two ways to stake your dots. First one is relatively simple, but less secure. The second way is slightly complex, but extra secure. Both of them would involve this terminology, stash account and controller account, Bear with me, I'm going to explain in detail what those two accounts are. Now, let me demonstrate the first way of staking and spend some time explaining the security implications of it. Right now, I have an account which has enough balance to perform staking. So let me navigate to the network dropdown and then to the staking page and click on account actions. Here, I'm prompted to bond funds to nominate a validator. As I want to be a nominator, I'll click on the nominator button right there. Here, I'm presented with a lot of information. Okay, so, uh, so let me focus on this part where Polkadot.js already populated both stash and controller accounts with my one and only Polkadot account that I had in the Polkadot browser extension. And the note here says, Distinct stash and controller accounts are recommended to ensure fund security. You can ignore that for now, choose to keep them the same, continue with staking procedure, enter the amount of funds you would like to bond, and then here in this dropdown, you can pick the option that best suits your needs. If you choose the first option, you will compound your staking rewards by bonding them as well. The second and third options would essentially perform the same operation as your controller and stash accounts are the same. The rewards will be deposited into your account and they won't be bonded, meaning you can transfer them as you like. Through the fourth option right there, you can divert your staking rewards to a different address. The next step is to pick the validators you would like to nominate. If you are a beginner and need help choosing validators, a detailed nominator guide is posted in the video description. Let me show you where I go to when I try to pick validators. It's the targets tab in the staking page. Polkadot.js by default sorts the list of validators based on the expected staking reward returns. Now, who wouldn't like to get a lot of returns on staking, right? So uh, the thing is that shouldn't be the only criteria which you use while you select your validators. So that's why do your own research, read the nominator guide posted in the video description and pick your validators wisely. 
you're allowed to choose up to 16 validators to nominate. All right, so after you pick the validators, you can sign and submit this transaction and you will start earning rewards from the next era. So what are the security implications of choosing the same stash and controller accounts? This relatively simple way of staking is as secure as your account password on Polkadot.js extension. Why? You will have to enter this password each time you make a transaction exposing your private key for signing it. Staking transactions can be frequent, like changing the list of validators to suit your expectations from time to time. Your account is considered to be on a hot wallet because it is made available for network transactions all the time. If the password of this account is compromised, then all of your funds are at risk. That's why I'll take some more time explaining how you can add an extra layer of security by having separate controller and stash accounts. Stash account is where most of your funds are, and you should preferably have this account on a cold wallet, which is not frequently exposed to the network. The frequent staking transactions can be performed through a controller account that can control the funds in the stash account to a certain extent. The controller account will hold minimal balance required for transaction fees and can be used frequently. If your controller account gets compromised, you just risk losing the funds in it, but the funds in the stash account will remain safe. All right, I will now create a new account which will be the controller for my stash account, which is holding my staking balance. I will now send some funds to it and get back to the staking page again. I'll click on the nominator button, change my controller to the newly created account. I'll choose the amount of funds to be bonded for staking, then choose where exactly the staking rewards go. And then I'm gonna pick the validators I want to nominate and sign and submit this transaction using my stash account. And now the stash account has a controller and the stash account will start accumulating the rewards in each era, provided the validators you nominate get picked in the active set and they don't get slashed. Now, if I want to change the validators I wish to nominate, I can do it by clicking right there and then click on set nominees so for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to randomly eliminate some validators and include new ones. Now, this transaction can be performed just by using controller account, as you can see right there. So when you sign and submit, you're exposing the keys of the controller account, not your stash account. Perfect. If I'd like to unbond my funds from the stash account, again, you don't have to expose your stash account keys for that you can do it there you can do that using your controller account there you go but if you'd like to change the controller account after a while because you you've used it so many times and you feel it's better to ramp up your security for the network you could do that but to change the controller account that's when you have to expose your stash account even bonding new balance requires the permission from the stash account because it involves funding transaction and controller account can never touch the funds inside the stash account. So I hope this added layer of security uh, is appealing for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in, in the comments. We'll be happy to explain the topics that are not very clear in this video. Thank you.